Hello YouTube and welcome back to the channel outside the target demographic. Today I have nothing to show you because I recently lost my wallet. Let's get started. So good news is, happy ending, I did end up locating it four weeks later. But we're going to go through a series of failures and a series of successes that led to me locating the wallet and a couple of checks and balance. <laughs> checks because I keep those in the <clears throat> uh, checks and balances that I will um, offer to you guys as uh, possible solutions and um, helpful hints to help you if uh, you find yourself in this situation. So to start off, uh, we had gone on vacation up to Michigan. We had, um, you know, driven out of state. Clearly, I don't have my creature comforts. I don't have my typical uh, places of stowage. So we're living out of a hotel, we're living in a car, we're driving around everywhere, a lot of things get moved, a lot of things are not where they typically are. Luckily, over that three and a half day vacation, I had kept track of everything. The day we got back was a very long day. We had to load up the father-in-law's chicken coop, yes, this is all relevant, into his truck to then have my family come over and visit the chickens that we had just got, and I like to believe that they wanted to visit me too. And then we had to drive up in the wife's car up to the father-in-law's house to unload the chicken coop because he's older and he doesn't need to be crushed under a 200-pound chicken coop off of a four-foot-tall height coming off of a pickup truck. So... Needless to say, we're very tired. Um, we're just getting reacquainted to getting back into our own house and our own creature comforts and our own possessions, and everything was thrown sideways. So uh, after that day, I had realized that my wallet was missing. I had torn the house apart. I had looked under all the things, over all the things. Um, I had uh, gone after the kids. I'm pretty sure they had moved it. They were very fond of moving daddy's things because... That's how they get attention out of daddy. So after some interrogation sessions, they had um, said that they didn't do anything with it. And well, I tend to believe them after that. So trying to figure out where it went. A couple things I didn't know. One, where the fuck my wallet was. A couple things I did know. Very likely that no one had found it. So, uh, and I also knew that it was missing. So the, the first tip I'd give you is system compliance. Whether it's carrying a knife, a flashlight, a firearm, a wallet, your keys, whatever, the more often you do it, the more likely you are to know the condition of it, to know if the batteries need charge, to know where it is, what it is, what's in the wallet, uh, rounds of ammunition you have, boo, 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 sharpness of the blades, um, all these things. So by having system compliance, you know what it is and where it is at most times. Well, system compliance was working until it wasn't. So have a system Know where it is, have it with you, have a designated place that you put it. All of these things got thrown sideways by literally being out of the state, not having the typical place to put it. So uh, the system will bend, the system will break, but having a system in place is the best way to know where the things are. The wife is very, very good at never knowing where her phone, or uh, sorry, key, well, also phone, uh, knowing where her keys are. So I hung a hook on the wall so she can hang her keys. Now, of course, the onus is on her to put her keys there, but when and if she does, she's rewarded in the morning of knowing where her keys are. Afford yourself a place, a known schedule, a known system to not only know where the thing is, but also know when the thing isn't there. In this case, I was able to figure out literally the day after that my wallet was missing. The next thing is have a series of safety nets in place. So on my wallet, it is a Ridge Wallet clone. And I have clearly labeled on it one of the um, printer labels that said, if found, please contact my name and my phone number. Also, I carry a card in my wallet and in my Altoids 10 with um, my wife's sister's father and mother's name and phone number and relationship to me on the off chance that the wallet is found. Or let's say hypothetically, even though I drive a fire engine red motorcycle with a neon yellow reflective vest, I still have fucking retards merge into my goddamn lane because they're... Why should they bother turning their fucking head? They have a roll cage and an airbag, so fuck you for being on a motorcycle. I digress. Let's assume hypothetically, but also in reality, some fucking retard crashes into me. I'm unconscious. I can't tell you my name. I can't tell you my date of birth. I can't tell you if I'm on any meds, right? So having that information in a non-verbal format is a good redundancy to have in place. So not only is it 
we found this wallet. Who does it belong to? We found this human being after a car accident who's hemorrhaging out of his head. He's probably not going to be answering a lot of questions. What are his meds? What is his medical history? Does he have any pre-existing conditions? Is there a point of contact? We can contact someone and let the family know and boo, boo, boo. Very cheap insurance. Costs you literally nothing but three cents in ink. It's not a subscription service. It's not anything like that. Uh, the next one I would tell you as far as safety nets go is photocopy or take pictures of both sides of all the cards you carry in your wallet. So we photocopy ours. We have a copier at home. I would not recommend a public, a library, a workplace photocopy machine because they've been known to have hard drives. Uh, slight tangent, but you follow me this long. There was a news article at some point that either a bank or a um, realtor's office or something was going out of business, changing locations, what have you. So they're selling off all the desks and furniture and this, that, and the other and the copy machine. Someone spent $200 on the bid. They ended up winning it. They had um, looked into the hard drive that I happened to have and people's names, dates of birth, addresses, account information, social security numbers, um, uh, credit score, um, credit card information, bank accounts, uh, all the things that you're actively trying to secure were stored on a hard drive hundreds if not thousands of people's information and the reason this made the news is i'm pretty sure the guy weaponized it he tried using it he tried selling it whatever he ended up getting caught and it was kind of a uh, cautionary tale much like this video to um be aware that that is a thing that those machines are capable of not necessarily that they do but are capable of so uh keep a copy of both front and back of all of the cars that you have not only will that tell you what cards you have, but it will also tell you what cards you need to cancel. So we had been tracking on all of our apps. Most of our bank accounts are combined because we're married and that's what happens when you get married. You don't keep your shit separate. So anything that showed up on my credit card would have showed up on her credit card statement. We were able to track what was and wasn't being used and if we could or couldn't verify those purchases. And for four weeks, we were able to verify those purchases. Which tells me, one, no one contacted me. Two, no one contacted anyone else in my life. And three, no one was using the cards. These are all things I wouldn't have known or I wouldn't have considered if I didn't take the time to put my contacts on there and had photocopies and had records of what was in my wallet. How can I track something if I don't know what it is? How can I know what accounts to monitor if I don't remember what those accounts were because I don't have my credit card as a reference, right? So have a physical copy that you could carry with you. I mean, I lost my driver's license, right? I don't know if the police would honor a photocopy, but if that photocopy matches the license plate that they're going to run anyways, right? Proof of insurance. Well, I don't have that either unless I had a photocopy. I also keep one in the glove box, but I digress. Uh, concealed handgun license. Yeah, that could be a thing. It's not in Ohio because they passed a law, and rightly so, that anyone should be allowed to carry a firearm uh, concealed, and I'm totally down with that. Pretty sure crime has gone down also, uh, despite what the Democrats are trying to do. But I digress. I digress. I digress. So there's a number of things that I may not be able to account for. There's maybe 12. See, the fact that I have to say maybe 12, cards on my wallet. I don't know how many cards. I don't know which accounts. I don't know which ones I have to call to cancel to put holds on. If I had a photocopy, I do. I can. But I also knew I didn't have to do that because the accounts weren't being used. The cards weren't being used. So why would I spend three hours on the phone putting holds and cancellations on things that, as far as I'm concerned, could still be on my property? That's what we call a spoiler. Um, so the last thing I would tell you is have redundancy. So we have local gas stations here at GetGo, and you can link your credit card uh, bank accounts to one of their special rewards cards. Why would I need to carry that in my wallet? The only time that I need to buy gas is when I'm in a vehicle that takes gas. Oh, right, the car. So when the Subarus have a locked hatch that you can unlock from the inside of the vehicle, you can pop the door to then get access to your gas tank. I keep my rewards card right there inside the uh, backside of the gas door. So 
I had a means, I had a way that I could get snacks, right? I can go to the gas station, I can use my card, and now my lunches are pretty much covered. I can still get gas because my card is still with the car, not in my wallet. This is a redundancy. This is spreading out the liabilities across a couple different means. Uh, people who have been on my channel before know that on my keychain, I carry a pill case, and inside that pill case, amongst other things, is a $20 bill. During the Trump administration, that got you a little bit more gas uh, than currently. Thanks, Biden. But $20 will get you a good ways with gas. Um, I also have a small cash reserve inside the vehicle. And I also have a uh, non-linked to a gas station actual factual credit card inside my car. So as long as I can find my keys, I do have some means of cash of credit that I can go buy the things. Because when you realize you don't have your wallet... Well, shit, now you have to go to an ATM. Well, let me just use my ATM card that I don't have because it's in my wallet. So go ahead and pull out a little bit of money. Keep it in your house. Keep it in your car. Keep it uh, you know, in your everyday carry bag someplace other than your wallet because when you lose your wallet, you lose all the things. So to recap, what I knew or what I didn't know is where the fuck my credit card was. What I did know is it's very likely... No one had my wallet, they'd be using it. No one had my wallet, they'd be calling me about it. No one had my wallet, they'd be calling the other people in my life because I gave them the means to do that. So either you're going to call and do the right thing and not use the cards, or you're not going to call and do the wrong thing and use the cards. Neither of these things happened. Very likely that someone, not me, did not have access to my wallet. Okay. So a couple things happened. I used the father-in-law's truck to move his chicken coop for him. Let's contact him and see if it's in his truck. Was not in his truck. Okay. So what else do we do? Well, we're going to cut to the chase. This past weekend, I went to the park. Uh, I typically take the kids. I typically take the tortoise as long as all three of them are behaving. It's a good icebreaker. It's a good way for the kids to get to know each other. It's a good way for, hi, guys, my kids' names are blah and blah, and this is their tortoise. If you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. But if you guys want to hang out too, that'd be pretty cool. So I had sat down and discussed with the family who came over about the tortoise, how long it lives, and how heavy it gets, and boo, 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 boo. When I got up, I had realized my shorts felt pretty light what where's my phone and sure enough my phone had fallen out of my shorts pockets i typically don't wear these shorts but i knew i was wearing them that day because it was fucking hot we have we're entering the 90 degrees and 90 percent humidity for 90 days portion of summer up here in ohio i don't care for it i i have a letter into uh god the manager and he hasn't gotten back to me yet but i was wearing these shorts turns out these shorts are shit they make you believe that the pockets can hold things and they do until they don't like a phone it's a samsung galaxy s22 it ain't small slipped right out of my pocket when my leg became horizontal to the ground hmm very likely that happened in my wallet turns out when i was driving the wife's car to go back up to the father-in-law's to empty the chicken coop so i wasn't wrong about the chicken coop needing me to drive a different vehicle. I was wrong about what vehicle it was. It didn't end up being in the father-in-law's truck. It ended up, ended up being in the wife's car. Even though the wife's driver's seat is a pretty deep bucket seat, these shorts apparently eject the contents of the pocket like a firearm discharging a shell casing. So hard it went up over the bucket seat bolster and went underneath the driver's seat. Why would I ever think to look there? Well, I'll tell you. Again, because no one was using my wallet and no one had called about the wallet, which told me where it wasn't, which led me to where it had to be. So it had to be in one of those cars and it ended up being in the wife's car. So very long um, diatribe, but a couple of things that helped me and is absolutely, I mean, going to have to help you as well. Put a means of contact not only for you, but other people in your life in or on your wallet and put it in a place not hidden. Those are all going to give you the biggest likelihood of someone being able to do the right thing. You are enabling the good Samaritan to do the good deed and get the contents back to you. Make it as easy as possible. Put it on the outside. Put it on the inside. Where you usually have your driver's license, that little window, the clear plastic thing. Put your points of contact there. The second thing, have photocopies of all your stuff. 
knowing which accounts you need to call and cancel and if it's a Visa, if it's a MasterCard, did I have that Discover card anymore? No, I'm pretty sure I canceled that. Well, I'll have to call them anyways. Now I'm spending a half hour on them chasing an account that doesn't exist. I have everything already laid out in a photocopy, in a picture on my phone, whatever. Uh, the next thing is um, uh, being able to track the usage of those cards. So having the apps on your phone, having the uh, saved websites on your computer, whatever. But keeping up, keeping track of which ones are and aren't being used. Um, and then, you know, if they're being used in another state, well, you kind of have a better idea of where your wallet is and you know to stop checking your house because it's in a different zip code. Um, and then having redundancies. While the priority is finding your wallet, not having to rely on your wallet by having cash on hand, by having a credit card stored away somewhere else. Uh, I think Dave Ramsey talks about someone had froze their credit card in a block of ice inside the freezer as a way where if they need to buy something, they have access to it, but they're going to have to wait hours for it to thaw before they can get the credit card code. It's an extreme example, but it is an example of a separate place other than your wallet, other than your purse, that you can store a credit card, a debit card, a whatever card for the unlikely likelihood of being able to, uh, of losing your wallet, your purse, your means to pay for things. So that's about all I have for today. Uh, very long diatribe. I do appreciate you guys staying here for as long as you did. Um Hopefully this doesn't happen to you. It's an inevitability that it will. The more people in your house, especially kids who like to get into things, wasn't their fault this time, but my Swiss Army knife that I lost for two and a half fucking months was their fault. Um, but having other means to compensate for its absence, having means of communication on there, knowing what you're missing and uh, knowing who you need to contact to start closing and putting freezes on things is going to take the sting out of not being able to locate it until you find out it is under your wife's seat. So I appreciate you guys stopping by. Any questions, comments, concerns you have, go ahead and leave them in the comments section below, and I will catch you guys in the next video.